Now that we have our button completed, I'm going to add a small LCD screen as well as some additional small buttons to this panel. And we're going to use the same process where we're utilizing primitives to subtract from the original model and then we're going to add a new layer and apply the primitive to it. In the process, we'll scale it ever so slightly. As I go through these steps, I'm going to speed up the playback at various points in order to make this video as concise and abbreviated as possible. Also go ahead and change the shader to something more reflective while I'm at it in order to better visualize the end result. If I hit the 4 key to turn on the wireframe, I can see this object is rather low polygon, so I'm going to voxelize it and increase the resolution. I'll now scroll to the bottom of the tool panel and click Smooth All a few times, and that will smooth our edges quite a bit. And with our button, I'll double click on the layer to rename it, then apply a black rubber shader to it. I'll now select a chest layer in order to add some buttons to it, and I want to utilize symmetry on this. So I'll try to line it up as straight as I can and then turn on the 2D grid. Right click on the center dot to bring up the 2D grid gizmo. Control up arrow to create a new camera shortcut. Right click to drop the gizmo. I'll now hit the S key to bring up the symmetry panel and then choose general case axis. I'm going to turn snapping on. The general case axis allows us to use two pick points to set a uniquely positioned symmetry plane and I'm applying rotation at this point. This is a good option to turn to whenever your object is not already aligned on the origin of the grid. So that has us set up for symmetry and I'm going to go back to the primitives tool. I'm going to turn uh, snapping off with my hotkey. I'll even turn the 2D grid off. Then just as we did previously, we're going to use the primitive to subtract from our main object and then hit apply. Skip forward just a few moments while I went through the same process that we did with the other objects. We now want to move on to the face plate and just add some minor details to it. So let's choose the head and in the select tool under faces mode, I'm going to just double click on the part that I want to work on and it will select all contiguous faces. With that done, let's go to the selected part of the tool panel. I'll choose Hide, then Invert Hidden. So let's go back to the Sculpt workspace, and we now have a new option that allows us to quickly bring in an object that is visible inside the Retopo workspace. So we do that from the Geometry menu, Retopo Mesh to Sculpt Mesh. In this case, I want to make sure I have the right layer selected. And uh, I also want to mention previously what we would have to do is go to the object section, import, and then choose pick from Retopo. Uh, so this condenses it all down into one easy step. However, it does create a child layer from it. Shift click and just drag that onto the parent layer. I'll zoom in, hit the four key, turn wireframe on. You can see it's rather low poly. But beforehand, what I did is I just selected all the hard edges and then applied bevel to it and that way I had the supporting edge loops I need so that when I subdivide it doesn't remove those hard edges. Let's go ahead and click increase resolution. You can see it subdivides it. Another option when you're in surface mode is to use the subdivide brush or tool and we could choose one of these options here subdivide entire object subdivide frozen area. So this is kind of like dynamic tessellation. It's just another means of localizing your subdivision like you would with live clay. But this uses loop subdivision. What I want to do is hit the enter key and it will just allow me to quickly apply loop subdivision to the entire layer. So I think that's enough for now. And I can turn wireframe back off. So I'll hide that and we'll switch to the other layer. I'm going to go into the Retopo room, unhide, double click the other side, and repeat the same process. 
Scope room, geometry, retapo mesh. Shift key, drag onto the parent layer. And increase resolution once, and we'll do the exact same process. But let's turn wireframe back on with the subdivide tool. I'll hit the enter key a few times. There we go. So I turn wireframe back off. And I don't need the symmetry panel anymore. And I just wanted to mention while I'm at it that as I apply some details here, I could use symmetry, but the problem here is, number one, this object, this model is not symmetrical. And if I wanted to use general case symmetry, I don't have any content here in the center to apply it to. So I had to get with Andrew and ask him if he could here in a future build add a gizmo to it and he said he would. But in the meantime I'll just apply it to one side and with our splines we can always flip it horizontally and apply it to the other side. So that's what I'll do. Okay so that will be face plate left So I'll hide that, and I'll go into orthographic view, I'm going to zoom in, I'm going to hit my hunt key for the 2D grid. Let's close the symmetry panel, I don't need it. As opposed to increasing subdivision on the entire object, what we can do is use live clay, and I'll switch to a spline stroke draw mode. You can go ahead and set your brush size before you start. It really doesn't matter. You can change it after the fact, but it's more efficient to go ahead and set the size of the stroke with your brush first. So let me choose a different brush alpha here. I'll choose something like that. And I'll go ahead and scale in just a bit more. And I'll click to create my initial points. And in this little toggle, you have an entire menu for your splines. I'll go ahead and speed up the playback for a few moments while I put these points down. And right click on a point to change its point type on the fly. Go from standard spline to B spline to hard edge. Add another line here. And now it's always a good practice to save your spline. That way you can get back to it later if you need. And I want to check my depth. Maybe a little bit of fall off. I can choose the amount of detail here. In this case, I want to actually invert the action. I want to indent as opposed to extrude. And hit enter. So I want to go ahead and unhide the other part, select that layer. Now go into this little spline toggle and I want to detach from the surface. I can attach it here in a moment, but for now I want to flip horizontally and then transform all. And then I'll just move it over. Okay. Go back to edit points. And before I hit enter, the tessellation was probably a bit much, so I'm going to reduce that to, let's try three, and then I'll hit enter. I'll hit escape. Come out of orthographic view. So let's now unhide everything. I can right click on any layer and just choose show all hidden volumes. We'll stop the video right here and we'll pick up in the next one where we're going to pose the character and bake all of our maps.